<laughs> and zip my anorak, look around the office to see who else has heard her latest remark. Most people seem to be grinning. The sales guy who mocked me last week for never having been to Hyde Park is laughing loudly. I take off my lanterns, slip on my court shoes and sit down at my desk opposite Sarah. It was snowing in Kent, I say. I couldn't believe it when I got into London Bridge and there was nothing. She twists her pearls round her fingers, smiles. Do you ride? I shake my head. Of course I don't bloody ride. I'm guessing she does though, and that she'll have all the right clothes. She probably heads off with her Highgate mates for a cocktail at some wine bar afterwards. I've never had a cocktail or even been in a wine bar, but the people in my new office seem to devour them. I attempt to smile. Do you? A neat page boy haircut doesn't move when she nods. Every Saturday, in Rotten Row, unless I'm out for the hunt, of course, it's tremendous fun. Our boss interrupts her flow and hands her today's post. As soon as, out, as he is out of earshot, she sighs and starts to drone on about how menial her job is, about how her expensive education is being wasted on processing pension applications. But I'm not listening properly. Did she really say she goes hunting? Hunting? I want to get up and leave. I can't deal with much more of this of much more of the people I now have to work with. I'm never going to fit in. I open my desk drawer, pretend to search for my stapler, concentrate on not crying. <coughs> After a few minutes, she hands me a large pile of papers, at least twice the size of hers. If you could get that group life cut done for after lunch, she says, that would be fab. I'm off to Elvino's at 12 for a drink up with some brokers, but I should be back by three. Pete's waiting at the station for me when I arrive in Gravesend. He's picked me up every workday since I moved down to live with him. As usual, he kisses me, gives me an inquiring look. I know he's hoping that soon I'll announce I've enjoyed my day, that I don't regret leaving Morecambe to move in with him. Today, I'm crying before we've even arrived home. He touches my cheek as he's driving. No better then. Sarah goes fox hunting. Bloody fox hunting. I can't believe that woman. I can't believe any of them. No one said a thing. Not even when she came back pissed from the wine bar and started telling them all about being bloodied when she was eight. God, Jen, does she know about... No, and I'm not about to tell her. I thought you'd relish the challenge. No, things are difficult enough with that stupid woman. I hate taking orders from her, I hate it. All those bloody pensions exams I've taken, and she's done none, thinks they're beneath her. She's got no technical knowledge at all. But surely... No, Pete, you don't get what it's like in that office. I can't afford to argue with her. I need to find another way. I wait until Friday evening when I know James will be home. When he picks up the phone, he sounds pleased to hear from me, fills me in on what the gang have been up to, where they're heading off to next. He tells me about a meet they'd all been to two weeks ago where someone had been attacked with a whip. Bastards. When did it all get so nasty? They feel threatened. They know it's only a matter of time before it's banned. Do you think? I wonder sometimes. Have faith. Have you been in touch with the Kent group yet? He asks. The hunt's really active down there, Jen. I'm sure your help would be appreciated. Not yet. Pete and I have been so busy. But I will. Look, the reason I rang is, I've got a name for you. I thought you'd know who to pass it on to. <coughs> her name's Sarah, Sarah Lamont. I've got her address, phone number, the name of the hunt. I've got everything. <laughs>